Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up uh, and install Metasploitable 3 uh, without any issues. So this is pretty much one of the most requested videos uh, when it comes down to a particular type of installation or setup. And you know, I've covered Metasploitable 2 and there's been like a ton of uh, requests asking me to cover Metasploitable 3 but for some reason many people find it a bit difficult to install or to configure and I could totally understand it and I can understand the position of the developers or the creators of this uh, box uh, because you're dealing with the Windows uh, distribution of the service has to be done correctly and you know you can go around distributing Windows uh, virtual machines or win Windows images because even though you're using the valuation version uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's illegal, so uh, because of that you have to use Vagrant and Packer to sort of uh, configure your own virtual machine. That means you have to download your uh, a new version or a fresh version of uh, Windows Server 2008, and of course it's an evaluation copy. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's actually get started with the video. So th there are a few things I want to cover. First of all, you can check out the actual uh, the actual post or the release uh, as to when you know Metasploitable 3 was released. It's a blog post on rapid7.com and uh, this essentially gives you an idea of why it was created and how to set it up, the requirements and you can see we need Packer, Vagrant, uh, the Vagrant Reload plugin and uh, you also need VirtualBox installed. So those are the prerequisites and um, you can you, you can also find the source uh, in, you know from the github repository which I already have open here and this is pretty much the only time you'll find me using Microsoft Edge and that's because I'm going to be demonstrating this within a, a virtual machine a Windows 10 virtual machine you can also install it on Linux I'll probably make a video on that but it's it seems to be the most straightforward uh, on on, on Windows and I haven't run into any issues with this particular method so uh, what you want to do is if you're on Windows and you have a, a, a git client like uh, like the git uh, for a Windows uh, system or you can actually download it and use it you can clone the repository or you can just download the zip file here it's about 150 megabytes as for Packer, uh, the links are hyperlinked right over here. So you have Packer, Vagrant, VirtualBox, etc. Now on this virtual machine, I already have VirtualBox installed. Uh, I have all the files within a Metasploitable 3 folder. Uh, for some reason, my VM is, is not that quick. So hopefully that doesn't affect the performance here. So I have the Metasploitable 3 zip file. This is from the GitHub repository. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract it here and uh, we'll just click on extract and we'll let that extract the file so there's quite a few files in there it's about as i said 150 megabytes we also have packer so i'll be showing you how to set up the environment so ensure that you have virtualbox set up and i know you can do this with vmware but uh, vmware causes a lot of issues and i'll be showing you the easiest way you know the, the path of least resistance when doing this all right so uh, when you have the uh, the Metasploitable uh, file unzipped here, uh, or the folder unzipped, what you want to do is, uh, well, let me just open this up and we'll get rid of the zip files. Um, so I'll get rid of these Packer and the Metasploitable 3 master zip files here. Uh, so you can, this is the, the directory we'll be working in, the Metasploitable 3 working directory right over here. And uh, we'll be working with this build PowerShell script in a second. So um, what we want to do with Packer is we want to copy the uh, the executable and we want to go into our local drive, our local disk here. Uh, and you want to go into program files uh, because we want to we want to be able to access uh, Packer. So we're going to add it to the system. Uh, we're going to add it as a, an environment variable. So we'll just create a new folder within program files, and uh, we'll just wait for it to prompt up here. So we're going to say Packer, and we'll enter in here and paste in the Packer executable. All right, now we need to uh, we need to make sure we can set the environment variables here. So, uh, sorry, that is environment variables. We're just going to click on that, and we're going to go into environment variables, into system variables. We're looking for the path uh, variable here. We're going to click on edit, and uh, we can just we can just copy the path here to the Packer executable, or you can browse for it manually. We're just going to click on new. And I'm just going to paste in the directory there and I'm going to hit OK, hit OK, and I'm going to close these dialogues here. And uh, now we can sort of test it using the command prompt. So again, we can simply just type in Packer and that will actually prove that it's working. So there you are, uh, Packer. And again, you can enumerate uh, the version that you have running. 
right? So say Packer version, so 1.45, and uh, that proves to us that we have Packer set up correctly. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, you want to set up uh, Vagrant. So we're just going to click on the executable. By the way, uh, all of these download links will be in the description section in the event that you want to download them. So we're just going to uh, wait for this to uh, set, uh, to actually prompt us with the setups. Uh, so this is the setup wizard. So just leave everything as it is in regards to the uh, the the default options within the setup wizard. I'm going to hit next install, and uh, hopefully. Uh, we can get this installed without any issue. So we'll just let this begin. It should ask us for administrative privileges. There we are. I'm going to hit accept and it's going to start the installation process. After which we should also test and see whether it's installed by uh, actually testing to see if we can access the Vagrant command from the command prompt. Uh, after that, we'll be working with the PowerShell. So I just wanted to let, let you guys know that. So um, we'll... Uh, We'll just wait for this to complete. And uh, in the meantime, we can actually just prompt up our PowerShell here. Uh, sorry, not power. Uh, yeah, Windows and uh, Windows usually has these issues. So I'm just going to open up PowerShell here. And uh, let's actually pin this to the taskbar while that is, uh, while that is actually installing. Uh, did I pin that? Yeah, my VM is really, really slow today. I do apologize for that. You know, Windows VMs are always going to be slow. I think that's because I didn't actually... The, it's not really a problem with the VM uh, being slow. I pretty... Yeah, I didn't enable 3D acceleration. I've, I've already installed the VirtualBox guest edition, so the performance should be fine. All right, so once Vagrant has uh, completed downloading, we can just hit finish here. And it's going to prompt us to restart our system. So we're just going to let that restart. So I'll get back to you when this is done. All right. So I've just restarted the system. Now, one thing you want to do before we actually even install any Vagrant plugins is you want to ensure that well, Windows Defender is disabled, right? So uh, let me just search for Windows Defender here. Um, I'm not really sure uh, how this works exactly. I haven't used, so there we are. We're going to click on virus and threat protection settings, manage settings. We want to disable uh, real-time protection and cloud delivered protection. And you can just keep that as so far as you're actually installing it. After the installation process, you can get rid of it or you can enable uh, Windows Defender once again. Um, so we are now going to uh, we're going to start installing the Vagrant plugins that are required here. So I'm just going to open up the command prompt, and the first and uh, the first one that we're required to install is the uh, the Vagrant uh, VirtualBox guest plugin. So or to do to do this, uh, we first of all uh, want to test and see whether we can access Vagrant here. So I'm not really sure whether you guys can see this, but I'll try and uh, zoom in here. So I'll just go to my fonts here, and let me increase that to something like 20. Uh, so you guys can see what's going on. So Vagrant is still, uh, it's not giving us any output yet. So we'll just wait for, for, for this to actually give us an output that we can work with. And then we can start installing the plugins. Uh, after we've installed the plugins, uh, we can then uh, work with PowerShell. So there we are. So we know that Vagrant works. So we can just say Vagrant. Uh, we then say Vagrant plugin. Uh, sorry, Vagrant uh, plugin install. And then we say Vagrant. Uh, and the name of the uh, the plugin, in this case, it's uh, VirtualBox Guest, and that's the first one that we have to install. And this uh, this setup tutorial is primarily focused on VirtualBox. I know it can work with uh, with VMware, and you can also do this on Linux. But this is again, as I said, the most uh, straightforward way you can go about doing this. So it's going to start installing the plugin. So again, it tells you this can take a few minutes depending on your internet connection and other factors. So I'm just going to wait for this to complete. All right, so that plugin has completed installing and we can now install the other plugin here. So I'm just going to use the uh, I'm just going to use the previous command. I'm going to just change it to Vagrant Reload. That is the primary plugin that we require here. So I'm just going to let this install again. And once this is installed, uh, we can actually start working in the Metasploitable directory where I want to explain a few things. So uh, we'll just wait for this to complete. All right, the Vagrant Reload plugin is done. So we can close that up and we want to go into the directory where we saved uh, or where you saved the Metasploitable 
three uh, GitHub repository or the contents of the GitHub repository. I have it under my Disploitable 3 master here. And you want to just use your shift and your right click here. And you want to click on open PowerShell window right over here. And uh, we'll just minimize this because I want to talk about uh, a few things regarding the directory. So uh, within this directory, this is uh, where all the installation is going to occur. Uh, so again, if you're working with your antivirus, you can actually omit this uh, this directory from being scanned or being protected uh, and you can keep your antivirus active so uh, what's going to happen is within packer this is where you find your um, your templates uh, where, where your templates will be stored and you'll also have your um, you'll also have the the build folder which i don't think is here right now but uh, that's essentially where uh, your uh, windows server 2008 um, image is going to be stored now if you take a look at the iso folder and you take a look at the readme here uh we can just open this up with notepad if i can actually access this uh oh wow that uh, that really didn't work out so i'll just click on notepad and hit okay here um so we'll just open this up with notepad so you can see that the, this directory is for a manual download of windows server uh, and you can it gives you the various uh the various download links if you want to go uh, go ahead and do this uh, it, and the various licenses that you can use. So this is very important if, if you don't have a stable internet connection during the installation process. By the way, you will require uh, you will require an internet connection throughout the, ins the entire installation process. So uh, that's essentially what I wanted to explain. Now the file or the script that we're going to be using is the build uh, PowerShell script right over here. You also have your build shell script. This is for the build process on Linux systems if, um, if you want to go down that, uh, that road. Now, uh, many people have actually been, um, if you take a look at the resources uh, directory, this is where you have all the, the various tools and the vulnerabilities where they'll actually be installed. Uh, if you take a look at the, um, where is the direct, the packer directory uh, and the templates, uh, you have the Vagrant, uh, the Windows, sorry, Windows 2008 R2.json file. You can also use this for the image, but that, uh, that technique hasn't worked for me. And uh, the one that works is by just ins installing the script. So we'll, we'll go back into PowerShell and uh, I'll just go into properties here. And uh, when I'm going to font, let me just make that larger so you guys can see what's going on. Now, if we try and install the script uh, directly, what you'll see will happen is uh, very, very common. So if we just say um, build, uh, ps1 and we hit enter you can see it's going to tell you uh, that it couldn't execute because um, uh, running scripts have been have been disabled on this system and uh, to actually enable this you need to open up PowerShell as administrator so I'm just going to do that right now and we'll open that up and we'll give that a few seconds to load up and um, again let me just set this up correctly I'm going to set it to about 24 so you can see what's going on so this is an, an administrator uh, PowerShell session. So what you need to now enable is uh, the execution policy. You need to set it to unrestricted. So we're going to say set uh, set execution uh, policy, and we're going to set that to unrestricted, um, unrestricted, and we're going to hit enter, and we're going to say yes to all, and we hit enter, and that's going to now enable us to run these scripts without any issues. So. Uh, once you hit uh, once you hit enter to this script, you're going to see it's going to check for a compatible version of VirtualBox. It's also going to check for Packer, uh, Vagrant, and the Vagrant plugins. And once all of that is done, it's going to prompt you to specify what version uh, you want to install. Now, the one you want to install is Windows Server 2008. And to do this, uh, we're going to just click on No right now. So you can see it gives you the option. So you specify the script and the version you want to build. So we're going to say build a PS1 or the partial script. We're going to execute it and we're going to pass the parameter Windows 2008 as the option and we're going to hit enter. Now, once this is done, this is going to set up, uh, it's going to set up the box. And then once this is done, uh, what you need to do is you simply need to type uh, in Vagrant up and that is going to set up the box. All right, now once the box is set up, it's, auto, it's automatically going to prompt up uh, VirtualBox even during the installation process. So you just want to let it uh, go for, uh, in, in my case, it took about one to one and a half hours for the entire process to complete. Um, so once, you, once you've run the script, it's going to, essentially what's going to happen is uh, once you run this script right over here, 
what's going to happen is going to start downloading all the tools and it's going to start downloading Windows Server 2008 if you haven't done it already and uh, yeah so so that's how to set it up now uh, I've already set it up and I've already got it set up as a OVA file I actually converted it into an OVA file um, so I, I think I can, I can actually show you this right now. Let me just minimize everything and I have it somewhere on my desktop here. So there we are. It's uh, I, I've actually converted it into a uh, an OVA file and you can see it uh, on my host operating system right over here, Metasploitable 3. Now, I, I was tempted to actually share this OVA image and I'll have to go, go through the licensing terms in regards to the ev evaluation versions of Windows Server 2008 because I, if, if it is illegal to share it then I can't. I know many of you will be asking me for the OVA file because you simply just need to run it. You don't need to install it manually. It's about 6.5 gigabytes. I'm not really sure. Let me just check. Uh, the last time I checked, uh, yeah, it's about 6.52 gigabytes. Um, so I already have it set up on VirtualBox here and if I just, hit, uh, if I just click on run here uh, and you can see that right now. All right, so once it's set up on VirtualBox after the installation process and once you've uh, set it up with Vagrant and you've specified uh, Vagrant to actually, uh, to, to actually push the box up uh, into VirtualBox, uh, you can see you'll be greeted with this uh, screen right over here and if you try and use the, uh, the keys to actually log on, that'll not work. So you want to go into Input, Keyboard, uh, Insert, Control, Alt and Delete and that's going to uh, prompt you to this login screen. You can log into the Vagrant account and it, the Vagrant password is Vagrant and you just hit enter. So we'll give that a few seconds to load up here. By the way, after the uh, it's actually finished installing and setting up the Metasploitable 3 box, uh, what you want to do is you want to just take a snapshot in the event you want to roll back. And there you are. So you can see Metasploitable 3 is now running. And in the next set of videos, I'll be showing you how to exploit it. Uh, there's tons of services. It's going to be really, really exciting. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any, any questions, uh, I'll also be having a, uh, a write-up of, of this uh, installation process on my blog. So if any of you are facing any issues, you can actually check them out there. As for the OVA file, I'll have to read through the documentation. And if I, if I will be uploading it, I'll have to do it anonymously. And I'm not going to be held responsible for any, you know, for, for any of the distribution uh, violations in regards to the Microsoft uh, evaluation copy. So uh, let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, uh, suggestions regarding this video, uh, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys. Mm -hmm.